Welcome to our lecture online. When the Voyager spacecraft reached the big planets, and when Voyager 1 reached Jupiter, one of the surprises was that Jupiter also had a ring. And upon closer examinations, we now realize the ring is actually structured in various portions, and the portions are, have very much to do with the location of the four inner moons, so we'll get into the details of that. Yes, it turns out that the Voyager spacecraft discovered that all four gas planets contained rings. Of course, everybody knows Saturn and the beautiful ring system, but it turns out the other three, including Jupiter, contain rings as well. Now, Jupiter's rings are a little bit different than Saturn's rings. It turns out that it's made up of five different sections. We have what we call the halo, then we have the main ring, then we have the Amalthea Gossamer ring, the Thebe Gossamer ring, and the Thebe extension. Notice that the innermost portion of the ring system starts at about 89,400 kilometers, which is not far above Jupiter's surface because Jupiter's surface, the radius of Jupiter is 71,492, about 71,500 kilometers. So you can see that it is roughly 70,000, 17,000 kilometers above the surface when the halo starts. Now, how you can tell that it's there is when you go with a spacecraft, which is what Voyager did, went to the back side of Jupiter, took pictures, and saw the light shining through the rings, scattering and reflecting off the rings, making it very bright and shiny, and that's how we were able to tell where it started, and we're surprised how close to the surface of Jupiter the halo actually is. Then the halo turns into a small portion called the main ring. Now the main ring starts at about 122,500 kilometers and ends at 129,000 kilometers. And it turns out 129,000 kilometers is where the orbit of Adrastea is. Notice that Metis and Adrastea almost share the same orbit. Their mean distance away from the planet is 128,000 kilometers and 129,000 kilometers, which is roughly 1.8 times the radius of Jupiter. And that is where the main ring ends. Then between Andrastea and Amalthea, we have what we call the Amalthea Gossamer ring. And between Amalthea and Thebe, we have what we call the Thebe Gossamer ring. Now the word gossamer means very faint, very elusive. So the very tiny little dust particles that make up the ring, the only substantial portion of the whole ring system is called the main ring, which is actually made out of particles, small little pebbles and rocks, as opposed to the other portions of the ring, which are mostly made out of dust, and dust particles of the size of anywhere from one micrometer to one millimeter, so they're tiny, tiny little particles. Now, how much of the material is there? Well, the dust material itself doesn't add up to much. But the main ring, even though it's small in size, contains relatively large particles, rocks, little pebbles. And if you were to all compress it together, how much of the material would you have? Well, it turns out the estimate is anywhere from 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 13 tons. Now, 10 to the 8, that's, in the, that's 100 million to 10 to the 13, which is about 10 trillion tons. If you were to all compact it into a solid cube of rock, then you end up with, on the, on the small end, um, a cube about 300 by 300 by 300 meters, or 300 by 300 on one side. And on the large side estimate, we end up with a cube of about 14 kilometers on the side. 14 kilometers is about 9 miles. So, Considering that the planet is huge and the ring spans all the way around the planet, that doesn't give you a lot of density in the particles, but at least it's, it adds up to a sizable amount, and that's where most of the mass is. So the cause of that ring, the presence of the ring, is still being debated. We don't know for sure what the cause is, but we assume that it was either a comet or an asteroid that got too close to the planet, and because of that, ended up being broken up and the the gravitational attraction of Jupiter kept it into an orbit. Uh, we've actually seen pictures of comets that have passed by Jupiter, come back. When they got too close, they broke up, and then we, on the next go-around, we see the individual pieces of the comet slamming into the surface of Jupiter. So we know that these things do happen, and if all the conditions are just right, coming too close, getting pulled apart by the gravitational force of Jupiter, it could break up into a, de a debris field that then ends up making a ring. So we assume that the ring is made through an action like that. The dust particles, however, that make up the fainter portions of the ring, 
that may be a different story. We assume that those particles will, over time, due to the interaction of the magnetic field and due to the interaction of the particles themselves and of the inner moons, they end up eventually approaching the planet, getting pulled into the planet, and we assume that the particles, the dust particles in those rings only last anywhere from maybe 100 to 1,000 years before they're gone. So we assume that those rings, those rings being there, that those particles are continuously being replenished. So we know that particles must be coming in, dust particles, getting caught up in the gravitational field of Jupiter and joining the portions of the ring so that those dust rings just continue to exist due to the continual approach of more particles that get pulled in and then particles that then slowly get pulled in from the rings into the Jupiter surface. Now, as you can see that the average distance between the moons, the four inner moons, and, Ju and the center of Jupiter is 128,000-129,000 kilometers, and then for Amalthea and Thebe it's 181,000 and about 222,000 kilometers. In terms of the radius of Jupiter, it's 2.54 and 3.10 times the radius of Jupiter. So all those rings are very, very close to the surface of Jupiter, as opposed to the rings of Saturn, which are much more spread out in comparison. So notice that before 1979 we had no clue that those rings actually existed, we had no reason to believe they existed, but then you can see that as time goes by and we send satellites out to those planets to visit them and we understand more and more about them, we begin to see that there's a lot yet to be discovered. So that's the story about the rings of Jupiter and yes they are kind of amazing and as we uh, send more spacecraft up there, we will learn more about the structure, the content, and why they exist. And that is how it is.